Amen. And uh, while they get me in tune this morning, I'm going to welcome those out on the parking lot. I know there's some out there. Let me let me uh, let me welcome you in. Let me get my little. You got to push, you know, codes and everything else. Hey, Lyle and Denise, Davis and Dane, we're glad you're out on the parking lot. You might want to honk your horn at us if it works. There you go. That's a good day right there. And uh, Chad, Chad, uh, Chad and Mindy Hall, we're glad you're here this morning. Why don't you honk at us? There you go. That's an amen. Uh, Jesse Lindsay, uh, we're glad that you're out on the parking lot this morning and uh, glad you're with us. You might want to honk at us. And uh, amen. Michelle and, and Jason uh, Holmes are out on the parking lot. And uh, we're glad you're here this morning. Now, let me stare some more down here. Uh, Connie and I are down in the Paw Paw Pass. So we're glad that uh, Barry and Connie are down in the Ca Paw Paw Patch. And uh, anyway, y'all welcome them this morning. And uh, I think that's all. I might. I don't think I missed anybody. But uh, yeah, I missed somebody, didn't I? <laughs> okay, well, let me, let me keep looking here. I, 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 yeah, I just don't see it. But anyway, that's, my old, that's always another one of my problems. I just don't see it. Oh, Marie Brooks. Hey, Fred, Fred, Marie, we're glad you're here. Okay. All right, I think I got everybody. All right. Did I get everybody? Oh, there's another one. Oh, Valerie Smith, you and Drake, y'all are out on the parking lot. And I know there's some more out there. I just, I, I, you're afraid I'm going to call your name out. And that's okay. But I want you, if you got your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to John chapter 19. We're going to be picking up. In verse, uh, or in verse 19 this morning, down to verse 27, I had preached a sermon Wednesday night that was, uh, I believe it was a word. Uh, I, I believe God showed me uh, something that, uh, that he showed me, and I preached it Wednesday night. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But in John 19, in verse 19, and Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. That's what I preached on Wednesday night. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part. And also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from top and throughout. Then said, Therefore among themselves, let us not rend it or tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, that which saith, They parted my raiment, notice that word, among them. And for my vesture, right? now notice that word, they did cast lots. And these things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus therefore had saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, that would be John, the apostle John, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son, or look upon your son. Then saith he his disciples, Behold my mother, so look at my mother. And from that hour that disciple took her, into his own home. Dave Watson, would you pray for us this morning, brother? <clears throat>
Amen. Amen. Let me let me read this to you. I made a little commentary, kind of kind of uh, get us caught up. And uh, uh, Wednesday night we had church here, and I preached on Jesus as He walked through the darkness, the rim of the spiritual world of principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. I had us all notice that He was basically alone as they beat Him, scourged Him after they sentenced Him. They casted lots for his clothing. They tore parts of his clothing to keep themselves for, for themselves. And scriptures being fulfilled as they crucified him upon the cruel cross of Calvary, which was a divine, divine appointment, amen. As Jesus is on the cross getting ready to die for the sins of the whole world in 1 John 2, 2. Notice as Jesus stayed close to the Father through all the pressure of the demonic rim, unloading all pressure upon him to quit. I can tell you the demonic rim was uh, all over Jesus, amen? And uh, you know that uh, the pressure was for him not to, not to go through with it, uh, not to follow through, but at the same time, at the same time, you know old Slewfoot, old Satan, he tries to destroy Jesus once and for all, or Satan thought, uh, his thought process was to, uh, to destroy Jesus, but I tell you, that's a problem with Satan. He's not that powerful, and he's got a whole lot of pride, and he don't know any better. Somebody say amen to that. All Satan could do is just kind of bruise his heel. And you know, when you look in Genesis chapter 3, and uh, if y'all could get that up on the screen, we're going to look at verse 14 and 15 just right quick, because uh, in verse 14, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, this is after he deceived Eve and Adam sinned, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field upon thy belly that shalt thou go, shall thou go, and the dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. That's the life of a snake, amen? amen? That's really the life of Satan. And then in verse 15 it says this, now focus in. I will put enmity, separation between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, Satan's seed, and her seed, that's Eve's seed, that comes all the way down through Jesus and us, amen? And it shall bruise thy head, okay? It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Well, I can tell you this, I want you to understand this. Satan will bruise Jesus' heel, and he, in other words, he will cause him to suffer on the cross of Calvary, amen? But Jesus will bruise Satan's head, that means he will destroy him with a fatal blow in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. I want you to know that, 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 that it is going to be a fatal blow. And he will, put, be, he will be in the pit uh, for the rest of uh, his remaining life with those that he has kept there. Church, Satan will bruise, or, uh, he will bruise our heels, uh, the saved. He'll bruise our heels when he has a... Uh, but, but, but I want you to know this. I want you to know this, that we have authority over Satan through Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 16 and verse 20, I want you to write this down. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. You know, you think Satan's got victory in your life. I got news for him. He's a whoop. He's whooped. And I can tell you for the believer, the born again, we have authority to do so. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. You know, today, let's look at how Satan operates to bruise God's people's heels. Amen? So when you look at our text this morning, and you look through verses 19 through 27, as he bruises Satan, as Satan bruises Jesus' heel, that's all he did. That's all he did. He, Jesus allowed him, uh, he allowed him to do what he did to put him on the cross. He allowed that. Amen? Amen? And it was all a part of a divine plan. Let me tell you something this morning. You're part of a divine plan. And God wants you in His divine plan. He's got a He's got a purpose for every every purpose life every person's life in here this morning. But I want you to show me something God showed me. Amen. I didn't read it in a commentary. I just kind of I studied about it. I looked up the words of what they meant. Uh, you look up in uh, verse twenty three, and it said the soldiers when they had crucified Jesus took his garments. Notice that, and they made four parts. Every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now, the coat was without seam, woven from top and throughout. Now, that's, that, coat, that, that coat was woven. But I noticed something else in the Scripture as I, 
as I looked up the words on what they, they meant, I noticed that the inner clothing was woven. Now, I didn't, I didn't know that before, and I didn't see that before. And it's got the same, it's got the same definition as the coat. But I want you to look at a couple of things this morning. I got two things I want to talk to you about, and they're important this morning. Number one, they parted Jesus' raiment, and this is a picture of Satan's work. Now, I want you to, I want you to know there's two works that's, that's on this cross this morning by, uh, by, by the picture of the garments. The first one is a, is a picture of Satan's work. Now, look down with me in verse 24. And they said, Therefore among themselves... Let us not rend it or tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment. Everybody say raiment. Among them, for my vesture they did cast lots, and these therefore the soldiers did. Now I want you to notice that this morning, the word raiment. They cut into parts uh, was Jesus' outer garment. The raiment is the outer garment. But I want you to know in verse 24, he it uses the word uh, vester and it, it says in verse 24 and they therefore among themselves let us not tear it but cast lots for it it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled they parted my raiment and among them and my vesture they did cast lots so there's two pieces of clothes and these, these things therefore the soldiers they did that so he tells him about the raiment to cut it into, into parts, uh, the outer garment, and, and the vesture, and, and that's also the tunic. Let us not rend it or tear it or part it, but cast lots for it. Who, whose it shall be? You can see right here, as I preached on last week, they're still playing board games, amen? That the scripture might be fulfilled. Now, the Romans didn't know the scripture was going to be fulfilled. It was in God's plan for it to be fulfilled. But it says, my vesture, the clothing, the, war, the, the clothing that was worn next to the skin. I want you to hear me. They did not tear it. And I can tell you why. Because God would not allow this vesture, this tunic, worn on the body, closest to the heart, that houses the vital organs of the body, to be torn. Anybody home, say amen. Amen. It was all woven together. And this is a picture of the church with Jesus as, as the head of the church. You know, in Colossians 1.18, I want you to kind of get a picture of this, this, this inner clothing that was woven through. I, I, I had never seen that before. And, and it was closest to the body. I'd never seen that before. And, and, and which, which, is, which is the closest to the heart. And you know, it's with the heart that man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confessions made to salvation. Amen? But I want you to know here today that the, that the garment that was closest to the body, uh, the, Jesus, Jesus is the head of the body. And the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence or stand first place in everything. I, I want you to know today that, that we are the body of Christ, those that are saved. If you're with me this morning, say amen. Now, if I lost you, say, oh, no. You know, I, I want you to know something, that God will now allow Satan to rip up his body, his church. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 16, you know, it tells us that we're all a part of the body of Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, talking about the body, according to effectual working in the measure of every part, every part is necessary, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying or the building up of itself in love. See, every part of the body is part of the building up of the body. And we need each other to build up the body. Anybody home say amen. It's called the koinonia. In Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, uh, when when. When Jesus asked Peter, said, who do, who do men say that I am? And he said, oh, Jeremiah, one of the prophets, John the Baptist, one of the prophets. And Jesus said, who do you say that I am? He said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not given this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I can tell you today that the church will not be prevailed against against Satan, but he will come against the church. But he won't win. 
Somebody say amen to that. Satan can divide. He, he, can, he can divide. He can, he can part out the raiment, the outer part, the clothing, uh, the belt, the sandals, the head covering. And when Satan can bring the heat, he can part out all the outward wear, which is those that really are not committed to Christ. Y'all with me? Just say amen. The raiment. The raiment was the outer part that had the beauty to it. But don't God look at the inner part? The part closest to the heart? Anybody home this morning say amen? We've seen in the last two years, the last two years, I can tell you, Satan has allowed the outer part, the outer array, part of the clothing. You'll notice that you'll notice in the last two years that, that the outer part's gone. There's only the inner part left for, for, for any church. And the pressure's been on people to quit or to move away or never go back to church. We, we've made it easy for people not to go to church. And we blame it on COVID, but is it really COVID? Or is it just another day? Is Sunday just another day? Or is Sunday the important day? You know, in, in, the, in, in, the, in the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 21, it said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The Sabbath day in the Jewish time was Saturday. In the, in the New Testament time, when Jesus died on the cross, he resurrected on Sunday. So that's our, that's our Sabbath day because of his resurrection of the New Testament and New Covenant. Somebody say amen to that. But do we reverence that? You know, here they still, they still reverence Saturday over in the Jewish nation, and it's a holy day. And listen, they shut her all down, and they focus on God. And here we are. We got the resurrected Christ, the true Messiah, the one that can save, the one that can actually save, and we don't even reverence Sunday. It's just another day. I was, at the, I was at the funeral home the other night and, and a woman come through and, and uh, hey, I talked to her. She was on a walker and, and she, it was uh, somebody I knew years ago and, and uh, somebody brought up about going to church. She said, I go to pajama church. I said, what is that? And she said, I sit in my pajamas and I watch it on TV. I said, that ain't church. The church is the koinonia. Matter of fact, when you go to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, I mentioned this Wednesday night. But I thought I might more mention it again because a lot of you forgot we had church on Wednesday night. And I know you forgot, but it's okay. I'll just go ahead and remind you the koinonia in Acts 2, 42. It says right at the day of Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost, when the, the church was birthed off and the, the abiding Holy Spirit worked outside of man, became the indwelling Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. And, and at the end, there was, there was 3,000, about 3,000 that, that, that gladly received Christ and were baptized. There's probably more than that, but the rest of them weren't glad about it. That's the out, outward raiment. But the inward raiment, they followed the Lord and believers' baptism. Some say amen to that. But here they says in Acts 2, 40, Two said, and they stood fastly. They were unmovable and they were unshakable in the apostles' doctrine. Doctrine is very important. If you go to a church and they say doctrine is not important around here, I'd advise you to get out. Doctrine's important. The teaching of God's word is important because it is unadulterated. It is God's spoken word, and He leaves it to us as a love letter, and it's not confusion. Uh, and it, there, it, it all lines up. You just, you just need to be reading in the Spirit. Amen. That's all I can tell you. But I can tell you in Acts 2, 42, and they stood fastly in the apostles' doctrine, the fellowship, that's the koinonia, that's the partnership, that's the assembly. Steadfastly. They didn't go to pajama church. They stood fastly in the apostles' doctrine, the fellowship, the koinonia. Koinonia. I mean, you can't encourage nobody if you're not around them, amen? You can't build a church if you're not around. Somebody say amen to that. So that's the outer raiment. And, and the inner raiment is the, is the church. They're the ones, they're the ones that, that stand fast in the fellowship, the koinonia. And then it says in the breaking of bread, that's the communion. A lot of people say, I'm not going to church this morning. They're just having communion. That's the outer raiment saying that. The inner raiment that's all woven together as the body, 
They're, they're going to the fellowship because, see, that word communion is the same Greek word as fellowship. It's the partnership. It's the koinonia of the share of burdens, the share of each other's uh, of lives, and, and we ought to be one church together. There's two koinonias in the, in the four steadfastness. So they stood fast in the apostles' doctrine, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and prayers. All that works together. How you know going to know to pray for somebody if you're never around them? Anybody home? I'm way off my notes. But I, you'll notice here in John, there were multitudes, you know, and, 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 and the multitudes, they, they followed Jesus because of all the miracles that he did. That, that he, but he didn't commit himself to them. In John chapter 2, in verses 23 through 25, he said they followed him because of his miracles, but he did not commit to man because he knew what was in man. They knew he was, they were following him for his miracles. You'll also notice here in the time of the cross when darkness and principalities and rulers of darkness of this old world comes that, that a lot of people, that's when they bail out when it gets tough. I brought this up Wednesday night in 1 John chapter 2 in verses 18 and 19. They, they, he's talking about the spirit of Antichrist. And in verse 19, they went out from us because they were not of us. For they had been with us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out. They left that they might be made manifest, brought to light that they were not a part of us. Anybody home? That's the outer raiment. The miracle followers, the glory seekers, when it gets tough, the outer, the outer garment is ripped up. It can be ripped up of any piece of the body. It can, any part of that clothing could be ripped up because it's just the outer garment. Anybody home this morning say Amen. Number two, let me give you some good news. The inner body is not ripped up. This is a picture of Jesus' work. When we talk about the tunic or the vesture right here, we, I want you to see in verses 24, he said, They therefore among themselves let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled. They parted my raiment among them. For my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Verse 25. Now watch. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. Y'all see anything funny there? You remember what happened at the cross of Jesus? And now... There stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. But you notice here, where were they? They were by the cross. Y'all see that? Say amen. amen. And in verse 26, and when Jesus therefore saw his mother and disciple standing by, the disciple, the disciple, one, standing by whom he loved. He wouldn't even call out his name because by the time this was wrote, John had done, been humbled, amen? He didn't want his name brought out. So this is John, the apostle. And the, the, the disciple standing by whom he loved, he said it to his mother, woman, look at thy son. I want you to notice that. Y'all with me? Now here it is, his, he, he, his mother is standing by and this disciple is standing by who he loved. And when you, when you get down to verse 27, he says, Then said to his disciples, Behold thy mother. He said, Look at my mom. John, look at my mom. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. That's a picture of the church. Y'all with me? John took care of Jesus' mother. That's the last thing Jesus took care of while he, was on the, while he was on the cross. Then after that, he said, I thirst. There's John taking care of his mother. John's at the cross, his mother. The other Marys are at the cross. But what about the other disciples? Where were they? They were all scattered. 
Are they not part of the body? Good question, isn't it? Are they the raiment? The outer part of the body or are they the vesture, the inner part of the body? Anybody home? You know, let me say this. A woven clothing does not have seams. Y'all know what a seam is? There's a seam right there. But uh, woven, it's just it's like a big crochet. Amen? Y'all with me? Say amen. amen. Now, now, let me say this. When a woven clothing does not have seams, it's all woven together. But sometimes the tunic can be torn by a sharp object. And then it would need bending. Hello? It would need stitched. This is a picture of God's grace. You know, these that were scattered were, were, were cut out by Satan, by, but, but by the grace they were mended back together. These disciples were all given grace as they came back into the tunic, the inner clothing. Anybody home? The inner clothing of the body. They were a part of the head, Jesus, the church body. Peter and six other disciples tried to go back to the old life of fishing after the resurrection before they saw Jesus, but guess, guess who was waiting on the bank when they come in tolling all night? The old head of the church was sitting there. Jesus, what did he do? Well, when they got up to the bank, Jesus told Peter, said, you cotton-picking scoundrel. I told you to deny me. You ain't worth two cents, and you're not a part of my body. Is that what he said? He said, Peter, son of Jonah, you love me more than the rest of these? Peter said, I do. He said, feed my lambs. That's them little children. They're eating. Looks over at Peter. Peter, son of Jonah, loveth me more than the rest of these disciples. He said, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. They're eating. Looked over at Peter again. Third time. How many times did he deny Jesus? So yeah, this is the third time. He said, Peter, son of Jonah, you love me more than the rest of these he said, Lord, you know I love you. <clears throat> he said, feed my sheep. And you know what? Right there, he got mended up. Because when he denied the Lord three times, he went out and wept bitterly. He was even cussing. He had a lot of time to think about all that, didn't he? Y'all ever have a cussing fit and wish you hadn't have? Peter did. But he went out and whipped bitterly. <clears throat> Amen. What happened? God, Jesus himself, mended him back up. Is that not a picture of grace? And the Holy Spirit, Jesus mended him back up and told them to wait for the promise. He said, you wait for the promise. That's the promise of the Holy Spirit. Because when Jesus sent it up, he sent back the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. He said, you wait for the promise, and when, I, and when I send him back, he will, he, will, he will give you power to be witnesses for me in Samaria and Jerusalem, Judea, and the uttermost parts of the world. So they waited for him in the upper room. Don't you remember, <coughs> church, that multitudes followed him? Y'all remember that? I have COVID, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm kidding. I am kidding. <clears throat> Multitudes followed him when they saw the miracles. Remember the woman that pressed in, had the issue of blood? She crawled up there. She said, Boy, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. They told him, Back off. She reached up there and touched that garment. She got close, didn't she? 
He said, she touched that garment. He said, there's virtue and power had gone out of me. He said, I did it, Lord. He said, but your faith has saved you. Remember that? Remember the two blind men? They hollered, Jesus, Son of God, what do you have me to do? They told him, shut up. Y'all be quiet and leave him alone. Jesus, they just hollered louder, kind of like me. He said, what do you have me to do? He said, we want to see. And he healed them. Where was all them people, the multitudes? Where were they at? You know how many people was in the upper room? About 120. It went from five or 6,000, 8,000 people to nothing. 100, about 120 is what it says. That's the inner, that's the vesture. That's their interwoven, amen? No, the nucleus is important. Amen? Let me ask you something this morning. Those old Roman soldiers, they were casting lots. There were probably four of them. That's what that unit was, usually four. So they would have parted that raiment in four parts. They were casting lots for it, rolling the dice. Church, let me ask you something. Which garment are you this morning? Are you the raiment that has been parted out? Or are you the vesture, the tunic, the closest to the body of Christ, the fellowship, the koinonia? Which one are you? You know, I felt like I got a word yesterday. I was going to bust if I didn't preach this this morning. Amen? And I got to thinking about it. You know what? About the same amount of people is going to come tonight as they would this morning. Might as well have it this morning. Amen? But we're one of those two pieces of the body. We're the outer raiment that has got to be easily torn, or we're the woven. But sometimes you need stitching back up, mending back up. Amen? Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad God's never done with us? Amen. We may be done with him, but he's never done with us. It don't matter what sin you've done because what he did on the cross is sufficient to forgive you of that sin. There's people who's carried sin for 25, 35, 40, 50 years. <clears throat> Swan Man, a comedian, talks about his mother-in-law. <clears throat> Said uh, they got out on, he got out on the porch each morning. They were somewhere and drinking his coffee, and she come outside and sat down beside him. His son was coming up. She wanted to see the sun come up just like he did. Now, he's a, he's a real comedian. He's funny. He's a Christian artist, Christian comedian, that is. And his mother sat down beside him. They started talking about the Lord. And she told him a secret that she's never told anybody before. She said, you know, when I was a kid, I made a bad decision. I had an abortion and I've never told anybody. Until now. And you know, the swan man, whatever it is, I can't remember his name, first name, but all in that right there, she just finally got it off her chest. Even though God's forgiven her, she couldn't tell nobody. She got it off her chest. And he was the right one to tell it to because he ministered to her. And she wanted to use that to help other people. Well, it's hard to come clean when you're 70 or 80 years old, but sometimes you got to, amen? She came clean. And you know, I just wonder how many people pack stuff that I can't even conceive what they've had to pack. It's been physically abused, verbally abused, Physically abused, sexually abused, all those years, and they can't tell nobody. But they got that outer garment that kind of protects them. Amen? But it can be tore. 
It's that inner garment you want on that can be repaired. It's woven together. And on church, I just want you to know God can mend up anything if you let him. You just got to be close to him. Amen. He's waiting. He's waiting this morning. Some of you's worried about a lot of things in your life. But you know, God tells us to pray, and sometimes God don't move for a lot of years. That's heartbreaking, isn't it? Because we want to see it now, don't we? Well, I do. But I've learned that that's not the way God operates, because when God operates, He does it the way He does it. He may fix just that, not just that one thing, but He'll fix all the things around it. Amen? Why? Because he's in the mending business. Where are you at this morning? Why are you here? What do you need this morning? What sins you need forgiven? God already knows. Won't you let him have it? Amen? I'm going to be standing down at the front this morning. I'll pray with you. And you can ask anybody here. Whatever you tell me, I don't tell. Church, can you verify that? I don't talk about it. I don't forget and tell somebody I don't talk about it. I'll help you carry it. But I'll help you carry it in prayer. Amen? There's other people here you can trust. You just got to be a part of the church body and get to know who they are. The koinonia. Once you learn the koinonia, you can trust them. They'll help you carry that burden. Amen? Let's pray this morning. Lord, we come to you. Lord, I feel like you gave me that word. I had never seen that 